Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in Internet Shitlords, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, this book here, next to Sword and Caravan there, this book, which is called The Lost Dungeons of Taunusborg, by, originally by Greg Svensson, all right? So this is a deluxe recreation with a number of additional things of the original Taunusborg dungeon. And uh, this was produced by Secrets of Blackmore, who did the documentary Kickstarter Secrets of Blackmore, which is an incredible documentary about the origins of the D&D hobby. Um, and it was sent to me to take a look because this is a dungeon, but it is not just any dungeon. It is one of the first dungeons. Um, these, this, this is the origin of dun the dungeons part of Dungeons and Dragons, right? Uh, so to give you a bit of backstory, in case you are not familiar with the history of D&D, D&D was created in 1974. The original box set came out in 1974, and it was attributed to Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. Now, um, it did not just spring out of nothing. It came out of this wargaming hobby where people were playing miniature battles. And there were groups of wargamers that were interacting and starting to make new and variant versions of the miniature war games. Um, and at one point, a couple of different people spontaneously came up with this idea of instead of playing armies, you play one character. And that character has a personality that you interpret. And they came up with other elements of the role-playing structure, right? The idea of making rules for one character, how to advance, right? And at some point, the concept of the dungeon. And so this was happening in mainly in two primary gaming groups, one of which was um, Gary Gygax's group, and the other one was Dave Arneson's. So Gary Gygax's was Greyhawk, and, uh, and Dave Arneson was Blackmoor. And they they started exchanging notes and eventually combined their different rules about this type of game and created from this Dungeons and Dragons. Now, what is Taunusborg? Well, this is from Secrets of Blackmore here, just to show you. I don't know if these inserts always come with the book or if they were just given to me. Um, this is a, the, the original map of Blackmore Town, right? So this is a early history and this here is the first campaign map of Blackmore so this is like the earliest this is this is probably the earliest D&D map actually it's 1971 you know <laughs> so it's like several years before D&D was published right um, so Greg Svensson was one of the players in Dave Arneson's Blackmore group and at that point, there was, you know, there were the there were dungeons below Castle Blackmore. There was, meanwhile, in Gygax's group, there was um, the ruins of Castle Greyhawk, and you know the dungeons there. Um, but um, yeah, this was another one which was supposed to have been quite an influential dungeon for these early groups, and and you'll kind of see why when I show you some of the the content. Um, and it was, it had, it had been lost. The reason they call it the lost dungeons of Tonisborg is because for many, many years, everybody thought that there was no surviving copy. And then during the process of doing the research for the secrets of Blackmore, um, documentary, the creators of the documentary uncovered the Tonisborg dungeon notes and it's, they've got the whole thing. So this book is hardcover, as you can see, uh, black and white interior, 150, 156 pages. Um, and mind you, the dungeon is only one small part of this book. It's a very beautiful book, by the way, very nice binding. It's got a, it's got a, a, bookmark and i always love books that have but they always get extra points if they have that um this is divided into several parts and so in the first part of the book you get an introduction to the the historical context the stuff that i was talking about including and you know an essay by greg svensson himself 
Um, and some of the illustrations of the original maps of Tonisborg Dungeon. And then you get information about, um, like, guidelines about how to basically DMing advice from, like, the early D&D era and uh, how you, you, you should play a Tonisborg dungeon, but it's really actually just a guide to all kinds of stuff that you find in... Um, in what is the style, the real old school style of play. We're not talking about fake reinvented old school style of play like uh, the, the the Bro SR, you know. We're talking about um, these were the ways that people were actually playing at the time. Now, that doesn't mean that everything in here is, is a good idea, you know. Um, the, some of these things, the, these were, you know, there was great, great, like the thing that groups like the Bro SR get wrong is that it wasn't that like these rules sprung up full formed and were never meant to be changed, right? It was nobody at the time felt like that. At the time, everybody felt like we're we're engaging in great avant-garde generation of stuff here. We're making a new concept. And so there's going to be tons of new things. Like everybody was trying to invent new things, right? In the in the hobby. And and so everything was being tested out, right? So a bunch of these ideas are ideas that stop being used. Because, um, in some cases, they probably weren't uh, all that useful. Sometimes maybe they weren't good actually at all, you know. Um, but this is this is a way to look at how how it was done in history, right? And so it's very interesting. Um, lots of lots of quite good and interesting advice, as it were. So this proceeds. Until we get to the the next section, which is the dungeon itself. And the interesting thing about Tonisborg is that it's very clearly not a modern dungeon, right? It's very, very old school style. It's the most old school you can imagine. Cause it's one of the OG dungeons, right? It's like, this is the first D&D, right? Um, but uh, at the same time, you see, you see that it has pretty much everything that defines a dungeon in D and D ever since, right? So like it's complete, it's already a complete dungeon. It's a dungeon that that's, you know, a bit wacky in some respects. You know, it reminds me, ironically, it reminds me of stuff like the Chult stuff that Venture Satanist does just because it's not quite that dumb. It doesn't have like, it doesn't have a lot of, um, you know, uh, te temporal references or, um, especially goofy encounters. But what I mean is that it's a dungeon that has no no coherent sense in some ways, right? Like there's way too many monsters for what the ecosystem of a dungeon would allow. Um, no explanation of why they're there, you know, that sort of thing, right? So it's like an old timey, you know, net hack dungeon, right? There's just all this stuff is happening there. And there are some areas, there are areas that are interconnected, of course. Um, but, you know, it's not like meant to be a super coherent ecosystem dungeon like like you sometimes get today, right? But other than that, it's very much the real the real thing, you know, like it's very much an authentic um D, &D dungeon as we would do them nowadays. Uh, so it and, and it's it's quite fun. Uh, it's got 10 levels. So it's it's meant to be for basically um getting through a whole lengthy campaign period, right? Here's this is level seven. As you notice, they get bigger as you go along. And there are lots and lots of connecting points in, in levels, right? Where there's like accesses, you can go up and down. So it becomes a very three-dimensional sort of dungeon at a certain point. Um, that's, that's one of the really curious things. It's not something... This this is pretty unique to Tonisborg, right? Because now usually in modern dungeons, you'll see that there's there's often only one stairway going down and one stairway going up to the next dungeon level, right? So this is this is really unusual, and it makes it um, like this thing of there, there there could be all kinds of potential mobility involved, you know. Um, there's level ten. So. The actual dungeon itself occupies, I think, about 50 pages of the book. 
And then after that, you get, you know, so as if this wasn't enough, you get the zero edition Dungeoneering rules. So basically, there's a complete RPG in this book. And what it is, is a um, an OSR style recreation of of what was let's say the original um, style of play in the pre-1974 era. Okay. So it's, um, it's basically uh, meant to emulate the early primordial days of D and D. Um, and so it's very carefully, uh, it carefully attempts to uh, reflect the style of, of how it was being played in um Gygax and Arneson's original groups. And it, the rules are quite simple. Um, they have some unusual details. So like elves only have a D3 hit point. So um, whereas most most people have a D6. Um, you know, there's there's all kinds of like interesting little elements to it. But Again, you get uh, a lot of the standard stuff that you would expect. With with you will notice some differences though, because for example, um, there's a class missing. Right? There's only fighters, clerics, and magic users. There's no thieves because the thief was famously invented later. Um, and uh, there's quite you know the rules are quite detailed and and they're. You know, it's an entire, you know, this is in some ways the skeletal framework of all OSR games, right? So, you know, with, with some, with a few differences, because there's a few things, again, that, that kind of fell out of the wayside. But, uh, you know, it's a perfectly playable set of, of um, OSR rules. Um, experience levels, uh, outfitting adventures, the equipment stuff is very neat. Um, experience, expertise, uh, hiring experts, loyalties, hirelings, right? Points out that, you know, in these old timey dungeons, you would, you would kind of be expected to go in with a bunch of hirelings, right? So sometimes you'd have like 20 people in a party when you count all the hirelings, you know? Um, morale rules. Counters and surprise, etc. Dungeon stalking. Um, so, anyways, the point is that here you have a, a fairly complete, including stuff like treasure, right? Magic treasure, or regular and magic treasure, um, and monsters. So, stats for monsters in like proto edition D anD D, right? <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's a complete thing that you could just use. You could use it to run Taunus Borg, but uh, you can use any, any OSR game to run Taunus Borg if you want to. Uh, but it's still very interesting touch. So the, this book is really super complete and, um, extremely interesting, but it's not just interesting as a historical artifact. It is absolutely playable, right? Like you can definitely put an, a D and D party into Taunus Borg and have a good time, right? And you can use these rules and have a good time if that's what you want to do. And you can read all of the other stuff, and well, that's that's more, you know, instructive than than anything else. But there's you know lots of interesting details about how the game was played and how it started and all of that. So it's a pretty incredible product, the Lost Dungeons of Tonisborg. Now here's the bad news. <laughs> I, I I I have been telling you all about this book, and essentially you can't get it because it was made especially as a um, a bonus thing for the Secrets of Blackboard Kickstarter. Um, then I don't know. I believe there might have been a second printing that got done of it. And the point is, in short, right now, there is no way for you to get this book. As, apart from buying it secondhand, and from what I've seen, a secondhand copy of this book right now is going for about like $400. So... I'm very sorry that I've kind of wasted your time describing an incredible product that is that had come out and has not really, you know, become available. It's not really available anymore. Um, but I'm kind of hoping that maybe we'll get Secrets of Blackmore showing up in the comments here. You know, he's the one that sent me this book, and uh, he's he's a good guy. 
And maybe he will explain if he has any plans to either do another printing of this one or to like make a version of a print on demand version, you know, even if it's not going to be as fancy as this, but the same book, like in paperback or whatever, simpler production um, for drive through RPG or something like that. Right. So somewhere, somewhere that people can get this and, and, and for it to not be just completely unavailable. I mean, I really hope that that is what they do um, because I, I think this is a really, really neat artifact of, d d history. However, do keep in mind that if you can't get Tonisborg, you can get Sword and Caravan, Medieval uh, Authentic Adventures in the Silk Road, which you can see is also in a hardcover, except we're in like glorious full color here. Um, there is now a deluxe color. This is the this is the regular color edition, but apparently there's now a premium because you guys demanded it. The publisher produced a premium color version of this book, which you can get from drive through RPG and check it out. Also stuff like the old school companion. You want some adve- OSR adventuring. Now um, this is not ancient dungeons in that cell, but there are a couple of dungeon crawls in the old school companion too, uh, which has 26 adventures. I believe it is um, that are all based on medieval myth and legend. It's recently become an Electrum bestseller. So check out my products and, uh, you know, these ones and all the other ones while you're waiting to see if you will at some point be able to get Taunus Borg. <laughs> um, I guess that's everything for today. Please share this video anywhere you think people will find this a very interesting topic. I don't see how it could piss someone off. Usually I say share this if, if it's somewhere that you think it'll piss people off too, but it, I'd be hard pressed to understand why someone would be pissed off at this, except for the fact that you can't get this book anymore, you know, unless you want to spend 400 bucks or something. Um, but uh, other than that, yeah, share it, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, like this video, check out all my other video series, a programming note on Sunday, we're going to be having our next episode of Inappropriate Characters with Venture Satanis and Joe Bittman over in the Inappropriate Characters channel. So don't be don't, don't forget to check that out. It's going to be 7.30 Central as usual. And uh, we're definitely going to be talking about 1D&D, but we might be talking about some other stuff there. We're, we're, we're total, not completely certain yet. It's still a little bit early to, to find all the topics, but uh, be sure to check it out because it's bound to be interesting and fun. Um, and, uh, yeah. So if you like the stuff I do, if you like my reviews and my other products, my other, um, my other videos, uh, then be sure to check out my games. Um, you can support me on Patreon too, if you really don't want to buy any of my games, (laughs) but you know, it's a lot better if you buy something for yourself and then, you know, it's also, you're supporting me, but you're also getting something that you're going to find eminently useful, you know? Um, and I really appreciate it for all of you for, all of the support that you've shown so far, because uh, it's really been remarkable how much success we've had um, and how well this, both this, this channel and the uh, my, my RPG products have been doing. Um, It proves the strength of the OSR, you know, and there's this, this, this absolute link (laughs) between the, the OG gamers and how they did stuff and what the OSR is all about. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. And that's really why, in spite of the fact that you can't buy this book, I wanted to show you guys this book at least and and explain that there is that um, that connection. The spirit of the OSR um, is something that is a very powerful thing and it's continuing to grow. That's everything for today. Currently smoking uh, Lorenzetti uh, poker plus Argento natural.